What's up everyone? Um, I'm making this video today to talk about how I believe XRP, XLM, XDC are all going to work together in this new financial system. As you can see, I'm walking through a bit of a narrow path here. I don't know why I've chosen to film right now, but here we are. I've made my decisions and I have to live with it. We know a lot about XRP and we spend a lot of time talking about XRP, really. And we know how it's basically going to operate in this new financial system. What I think most people don't do, and, and I'm guilty of it, is we don't look into XLM or XDC. And both of these two tokens are gonna to be playing a huge role in the way the new financial system works, in addition to all the other ISO compliant tokens. I shouldn't say compliant because not all of them are, but you know, all of these utility-based tokens. This is a really difficult path to walk down. Anyway, I might be a little bit out of breath too because I'm out of shape, guys. Too much time reading 100 page documents than, than out here exercising. <laughs> Bear with me while I talk like this. I think one of the main reasons why people don't discuss this is because they don't really know the difference between Stella and Ripple. So the difference in technologies because they are so similar and we struggle to see what the nuances are, the differences are between the two and then ultimately envisioning how that looks in the future. And so here's my take on that. Overall, I want to say, first of all, that this isn't XRP's game. It's everyone's game. There's an ecosystem that has to exist in order for all of these things to work. In order for XRP to work, you know, we need quant. We need all of those other utility tokens. You need them all because without all of the technologies playing in together, each individual one is basically worthless. And even kind of incorporating in that, we can talk about Ethereum and the Ethereum virtual machine and how that links into other blockchains. It's that we need the whole ecosystem to function in order to see the benefit that we're looking for across the board. But let's get into some nuanced differences between XLM and XRP. So XLM is basically handling the unbanked nations. They can basically do the same thing as Ripple, as XRP. It can basically do the same thing. It's cheap, it's quick, it's energy efficient, but it has a different focus. And that focus really is that unbanked population and from peer-to-peer -peer transactions. They also have something called Stellar Ramp or something like that. It's along those lines where it's actually a lot easier, significantly easier to actually purchase XLM with an on-ramp and an off-ramp, that's buying and selling into fiat, out of fiat and into fiat, than XRP, making it quite considerably better for peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Although XRP can do that, the main thing that XRP is trying to do is facilitate bank-to-bank -bank transfers. Right, so huge sums of money. So there's one difference there. There's plenty other differences between the two. I'm gonna leave it there for that comparison. Now let's talk about XDC. Now XDC is a smart contract platform essentially, allowing you to hold agreements on the blockchain and facilitate payments to settle those agreements, not settle the money, but settle the agreements using their smart contracts. On this platform, you can also tokenize various assets. You can tokenize gold and silver. You could tokenize the deeds to your house. And if you want to sell your house, you could essentially set up your smart contract to be able to facilitate the transfer of that deed to other people. And so I hear a lot about people talking about how XDC can basically do everything that XRP can do. And it doesn't make any sense because XRP settles, actually settles payments. It doesn't just facilitate, it settles because it has that liquidity function. XDC, while it does have some liquidity function and the ability to settle some funds with the amount of volume that's going to go through XDC, it simply cannot settle that volume. So it'll have to link up, like I said, this ecosystem, it'll have to link up in some way to XRP, XLM, all the other utility tokens in order to be able to actually settle using a liquidity function of a technology that is rooted in liquidity. And we know by now on this channel that that means XRP. And so we need to figure out what that actually looks like in this new financial system, in this new world that we live in. And I think when we look at XRP, we can basically assume that XRP is gonna be operating in the background. It's, it's not gonna be at the forefront unless they have a bank, but ultimately it's gonna be in the background, it's gonna be operating underneath everything. It's gonna be the, the rails for the system. And it's mostly gonna be unknown as, a, as an asset, except for those who have it. Um, I was talking with my dad 
the other day just about how when this whole thing switches the average joe the one who watches reruns of friends constantly and that's their whole life that's as far as they take it they're not going to know any difference they're going to go to the same shops they're going to spend the same money recklessly they're not going to not save their money as people like that do and they're not going to know any difference in in the system they're not going to know what's changed and that's kind of fine i guess so you can do whatever you want but xrp is not going to be hailed as this thing that was everyone in the world knows about xrp it's not going to be like that one thing that most people might know however because of the nature of it is xlm so when people are facilitating payments between them and their friends using xlm or they're they're buying xlm in order to do something in in the real world i think lots of people will know what xlm is but there is one thing that i'm thinking here as, as I'm walking, is that actually, if you think about it, there needs to be two types of CBDC because XLM can do CBDCs too, you know. And so I actually believe that XLM, bear with me here, is gonna be the most well-known cryptocurrency in the whole world. I think this is the one that people are gonna know. I don't think people are gonna know what's happening with XRP. It's gonna operate in the background, but I do think XLM is gonna be the one that is known because if we're moving into a CBDC heavy world, we have to acknowledge that XLM can do CBDCs and XRP can do CBDCs. So there needs to be two types of CBDC. There needs to be the bank-to-bank -bank CBDC transfers, which of course will operate on the XRP ledger and using XRP. But then what happens to the money that we send from our bank to a friend's bank or paying for a service? What's that run on? Because it's not completely geared towards XRP. I mean, not completely geared towards that kind of transaction, although it can, but XLM is. And if XLM have the capabilities to create CBDCs on top of it, we will probably be using XLM to facilitate those CBDC payments from peer to peer or person to merchant. Really, really interesting, I thought. And we're really only talking about XRP, XLM and XDC in this video. There's a whole ecosystem of different involvements and different use cases. But when we talk about those three, for example, I think the banks use XRP, we don't really hear about it at all, except because we hold it. XLM is used on the daily by everyone around the world, transferring peer-to-peer -peer or when you pay for stuff that's all run on XLM, using two different CBDCs, one for Ripple, one for Stellar, and then XDC operating all of the contracts that we make in our world, right? All of the agreements we make, employment contracts, housing contracts, and mortgages, and all of that stuff. Everything that we sign, that we sign agreements for, will be handled by XDC. So this whole world, I think, is gonna be extremely efficient run in this manner. It's very exciting, very, very exciting. And it's so exciting, in fact, that I am compelled, I feel now, to, to increase my holdings of XLM and XDC. One of the places where I actually buy my XRP, that I will now buy my XLM at as well, is Ubit. And yes, this is a paid segment of the video, but it's also useful that I actually do use their systems. Um, and I actually do use Ubit to buy cryptocurrency. So you can buy both XRP and XLM on Ubit. You can find the link to that in the description. It's a great easy to use service and really easy to use interface as well. So it's not like a confusing trading system like Binance, for example. You know, sometimes those can get confusing. This is really simple and easy to use. So I urge you to check Ubit out as well, as it is one of the places where I buy my XRP too. Many of you watching this video right now do not know that actually subscribing to me on YouTube is actually free. <laughs> I heard somebody say, oh, I, don't, I haven't subscribed to your channel because I thought I had to pay for it. Subscribing is free, joining is paid, but you can subscribe for absolutely free. You get three videos a week, just like this. And then it seems like what's gonna be happening is you'll be getting daily or more than daily short videos talking about the news that's happening in this world, in this sphere with all of XRP, XLM, XDC, Algorand, Quant, all of them. Um, we'll be getting daily videos like that. So you'll always be getting that injection of knowledge and understanding. In these longer form videos, I'll always try to simplify very complex topics in the best way possible. Um, and I may do it while I'm walking like this. Let me know what you think of this new format. Stay emotionless out there, everyone. And I'll see you in the next one.